Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Cook Inlet Tug and Barge is a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services with a primary marketing focus on the Port of Anchorage, providing their customers with quality-based service specifically tailored to their needs. interested in serving on your local federal subsistence regional advisory council, the deadline to apply is Friday, March 21st. The councils provide information and recommendations to the federal subsistence board on subsistence hunting, trapping, and fishing. For more information on the advisory councils and how to apply, call 1-800-478-1456 or email subsistence at fws.gov. This message sponsored by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. The National Weather Service. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 4th of March. As always, we encourage you to visit our website for the very latest weather information for your Alaska community at weather.gov slash Alaska or arh.noaa.gov. Give us a call on the weather info line at 800-472-0391. Find each Weather Service office on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube. And after the show, get the complete broadcast at Alaska Public. Org. Here's a look at the Bering Sea, and you'll notice a wide uh, path of moisture stretching all the way into the uh, mid-latitudes there in the Pacific and all the way up to the Aleutians there. As we put this into motion, you'll notice a lot of low clouds still working across the Bering Sea, some drier air south of Unalaska in the central chain, and continued disturbances rolling along this boundary here will keep moisture working its way slowly northward there. Uh, the question is how many of these areas of low pressure will work their way eastward. Right now, it looks like we've got colder air dropping southward from the Chukchi Sea. And with that, uh, we'll continue to see an opportunity for snow showers across some parts of southwest and south central Alaska and perhaps into southeast as we head into the weekend. Here's a look at the wider view across all of Alaska. Southeast, though, has been pretty dry. I checked on Juneau today, and I believe they're going on 10, maybe 11 days now of no precipitation, uh, not perhaps a record stretch of dry days, but uh, certainly notable. And across a large part of the Gulf, uh, well, I see you took the cloudy racer to the satellite image there for a moment, but uh, a lot of what we're seeing across South Central, uh, the Talkeetan is up toward the interior, is a uh, cloud cover that's producing uh, at least a little bit of snow across Valdez, Talkeetna today. Uh, some of that uh, certainly a couple inches and probably looking at more of that as we get into the next uh, 24 hours or so. A uh, slow moving disturbance will work around the Cook Inlet and as that happens, the uh, snow showers will continue uh, to fall in places like Anchorage and Prince William Sound and the Kenai Peninsula and all the way up to Susitna Valley. Uh, places like Fairbanks may be looking at light snow as we go into the next 24 hours there, an inch or so if possible across your area, but that's really about where it stops. There's plenty of dry air here across the west and the cloud cover will slowly work its way into uh, the central and north and eastern parts of the interior where snow sh uh, shower chances will become a little bit more favorable. Once again, dry weather will continue in southeast. The cold and windy weather across the Arctic coast, especially the Chukchi Sea coast, will continue. Uh, winter weather advisories and uh, wind chill advisories are still posted across the west uh, for at least the next 24 hours or so. Most of the winter weather advisories are dealing with 
uh, blowing snow across the passes there, reducing visibility. Uh, we're, so we're not really uh, worried about uh, intense precipitation, but the winds, of course, will still knock down that feels like index. So the wind chill values could feel like 40 or 45 below, which is what we had uh, for most areas across the Arctic coast, especially today. Looking at the weather map, low pressure sitting across Cook Inlet, slowly working its way north and east, ever so slowly. And so is this frontal boundary working very, very slowly across the Alaska Peninsula. And we'll notice this boundary here across the uh, uh, southern Bering Sea uh, moving very slowly toward the Aleutians. We've got another wave of low pressure out across the North Pacific at 996 millibars, high pressure across British Columbia and the Yukon at 1028 millibars. And here's a hint of warmer weather trying to work its way into the eastern Gulf. Uh, really not going to make a whole lot of progress just yet. And a little bit of snow falling across the interior, places like McGrath. Uh, thankfully for uh, folks working on the Iditarod Trail, I've got a little bit of light snow today, probably not a whole lot, but uh, areas across the Arctic coast also looking at light snow and fog there. A lot of low cloud cover looked like today on the coastal plain. Tonight's forecast shows low pressure working up north and eastern sections of the Cook Inlet. Again, it's not going to be a very strong area of low pressure and not a very uh, a fast moving system at all. Frontal boundary here just offshore of southeastern Alaska and Yakutat probably keeps most of southeast pretty dry with high pressure there. Again, still sitting across the British Columbia at 1,025 millibars. Trough of low pressure stretches all the way up into the eastern parts of the interior. And because of that, uh, do expect some opportunities for some snow all the way up to Susitna Valley into uh, Denali National Park, maybe even across Fairbanks and up toward Arctic Village and Fort Yukon. Light amounts of snow will be possible north of the Alaska Range. South of that, places like Talkeetna could get several inches of snow and might even see a few here in the Anchorage area in Matsu Valley. The frontal boundary working its way southward toward the Aleutians will pretty much throw on the brakes once it hits the chain. Meanwhile, low pressure across the North Pacific is sneaking northward just a little bit more at 996 or 969 millibars. By Wednesday, weak area of high pressure across the Gulf will try and chip away at some of the low clouds. Probably won't do an entirely effective job. The frontal boundary sitting across the uh, Chugach and the Talkeetna Range out toward the Wrangell St. Elias and offshore of Southeast doesn't move too much. The frontal boundary across the Alaska Peninsula doesn't move very much, stalls out around Chelikov Strait. And the stationary boundary along the chain may wobble a little bit further northward, but it doesn't move too much. So really, didn't see a whole lot of changes here across the map, except for low pressure may strengthen and weaken a little bit as it slowly drifts up northeastern parts of the Cook Inlet. We've got another opportunity for snow during the day on Wednesday across parts of the central and eastern interior up to the eastern Brooks Range. There will be some gusty winds across the western parts of the Brooks Range. Again, wind chill values there may drop to 40 to 45 below as we talked about. And areas of clouds will stretch across some parts of the mid Yukon Valley. Other than that, conditions look pretty dry. Breezy, uh, looks like more, mostly a northerly wind coming down the west coast. And our frontal boundary across the North Pacific really hasn't made any northward progress. We do see some warmer air, though, working its way into the eastern Gulf. We'll see how that impacts our precipitation chances across southeast. By Thursday and Friday, there's an opportunity for some light rain developing mainly offshore of southeast. So right now, not really predicting any precipitation chances there. Uh, maybe additional cloud cover for places like Ketchikan and Annette, so still dry in Juneau. And you'll notice some light snowfall still possible hanging around south central, the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, all the way up toward uh, the Copper River Basin and Golcana and up toward uh, central and eastern parts of the interior. Still looking at some snow showers there around Fairbanks. Points west of that though along the Yukon, high and dry, probably looking at a good deal of sunshine as we get into Thursday all the way up toward uh, the Norton Sound region and uh, getting closer to Nome. Maybe a few clouds there from time to time, but right now still looking dry and breezy with snow showers continuing along the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay and out toward Adak and Atka with the frontal boundary finally breaking into the North Pacific. So not terribly exciting stuff, except for South Central looking uh, at at least a little bit of snow there and some wind in the west. In the meantime, temperatures are in the mid to upper 20s. Uh, looks like some areas around the southern parts of southeast uh, saw a few areas closer to 30 degrees. Uh, Petersburg, uh, Annette, and Ketchikan were closing in on the 30 degree mark late this afternoon. Upper 20s to mid 30s for a good part of Prince William Sound today. Uh, Homer and Seward both in the upper 30s, Kenai 33, Anchorage 36, Talkeetna 27 degrees. The interior uh, mainly in the mid to upper teens, so not terribly cold there either. Uh, Eagle and Northway were both in around 18 degrees today, 17 for Healy and Greeley, 10 degrees around Fort Yukon. Brown and Anaktubik Pass, it was 17 below, anywhere from 15 to 30 below across the Arctic coast. Remember though, when you factor in that wind, uh, could have easily felt like 40 to 45 below in many places today. Around Kotzebue Sound on the plus side of zero, nine around uh, Kotzebue, uh, around zero in Shishmaref, nine above in Nome. Unicleet was looking at 12. 
McGrath showed 15 degrees today. Again, a little bit of light snow fell in the region there, so good news there for uh, dogs and sleds. 12 degrees in Bethel and around uh, Bristol Bay. Readings in the teens, 20s, even 30 around uh, King Salmon and Dillingham. For the Alaska Peninsula then, low to mid 30s was the rule. Most areas, in fact, were above freezing today. Sand Point 37, about the same there on either end of Kodiak Island. Pribilov saw temperatures in the mid 20s by late afternoon, 39 on Alaska and Dutch Harbor, and about 40 degrees for the central and western parts of the chain. Overnight low temperatures then will be below freezing in southeast with clear and dry weather. Prince William Sound and south central, mainly in the 20s and 30s, above freezing there, but just barely in Kodiak, low to mid 30s for the chain. Pribilov's lower 20s for you. North of the Alaska Range and uh, around Norton Sound, anywhere from 0 to 15 below in some areas, around uh, Fairbanks, 3 below. Fort Yukon, 14 below. Anaktuvik Pass, 25 below in the Arctic coast from 25 to about 35 below. Around Kotzebue Sound tomorrow, high temperatures will likely warm up into, there you go, the big reveal, 5 below in Kotzebue, uh, about 7 above in Nome for southwest, single digits and low to mid teens for southwest, anywhere from Cape Newenham to uh, Bristol Bay in the mid to upper 30s. 37 in Kodiak, south central, low to mid 30s with southeast still cold in the mid 20s to about 30 degrees Yakutat and Sitka a little bit milder at 32. The Arctic coast 15 to 25 below and the Aleutians on the other hand likely nearing 40 degrees. Flying weather then, pockets of IFR should be expected uh, north and east of uh, uh, looks like Wasilla and Palmer into the central parts of the Alaska Range. Uh, as you uh, go into uh, Windy Pass, you probably see reduced visibility there. So this is going to be the area that we're expecting a better chance of snowfall. Around Prince William Sound, expect IFR conditions there with uh, patchy MVFR across the Cook Inlet region and certainly a little more, a better chance of seeing MVFR across uh, the southern tip of the Alaska Peninsula, the chain, and a large part of the coastal plain as you would expect. Flying weather across Norton Sound and any area mainly west of the Alaska Range with the exception of the mid Yukon. Uh, probably looking at VFR. Your pass conditions in Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass will be at MVFR conditions throughout your Wednesday. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass expected to be VFR through the day. Rainy Pass, we should see VFR conditions there. Windy Pass, those we just saw, IFR conditions really through most of the day are expected. Isabel Pass, probably IFR conditions there. Mentasta Pass, likely instrument flight rule. Same goes for Tanita Pass for your Wednesday. And for Portage Pass, so that will trend toward MVFR conditions, so the worst uh, visibility probably in the morning. And Chilkoot and White Pass, we expect to see visual flight rule there. The freezing levels indicate uh, the cold air and dry weather, uh, mainly over the west coast and for the Yukon Valley there. Uh, looks like some slight uh, warming taking place across the eastern gulf. We saw that warm front working its way northward slowly there. That's a result of what you're seeing here. And freezing levels as uh, high as two to 4,000 feet across the Aleutians and just south. Icing potential mainly below 8,000, but above 2,000 for the central and eastern interior. Again, we did see several reports of uh, rime and mixed ice today across a large uh, part of south central Alaska and some scattered reports in the west. Below 8,000 feet across Prince William Sound and the Kenai Peninsula tomorrow, and below 7,000 uh, for the Alaska Peninsula in the southern end and out toward uh, the eastern parts of the Aleutians. The jet stream now shows high pressure in charge of eastern sections of Russia with a northerly flow coming right down the west coast and then making a pretty pronounced trough here across uh, mainland Alaska. With that, we get a lot of dry air. We get some support for wind across uh, the western sections of the state at the surface. But the main storm track is well to the south. And the reason you should remember this is right now across the tropical Pacific, a new typhoon is uh, starting up there. It's uh, been going for a little while now. And as that moves north and east, as it is right now, uh, likely it will get caught up in this main jet flow. But we'll keep an eye on that and see if there's any impacts toward Alaska here in the coming week or so. Uh, the way that would happen is we'd need to see this jet stream working its way a little bit more from south to north and have the position of this trough uh, strengthen just a little bit. We're not there yet. At 9,000 feet, low pressure sitting across the lower Yukon, guiding winds out of uh, the continent and then back over the water and returning flow right across south central Alaska, around 20 to 30 knots or so. You can see more of an east to westerly flow uh, wrapping in across the Aleutians in the Alaska Peninsula between 20 and 40 knots. And we've got our cold winds working off the uh, Brooks Range and across uh, the Kuskokwim and Yukon Valleys around uh, 20 to 35 knots with a stronger wind so up across some of the higher terrain in the interior. High pressure sitting just outside of Prince William Sound. We've got light southeasterly winds working over Haida Gwaii in the Dixon entrance around 30 knots. All in all, uh, east to westerly wind, not too bad across the Aleutians. It strengthens somewhat, though, north of the low as you get west of Adak around 50 knots. So turbulence potential, there should be some at least some light chop across the central and western chain. Below 6,000 feet, expect occasional to widespread moderate 
uh, below 6,000, mainly around the Cotsby Sound and the Seward Peninsula region, and probably across South Central as well, with a frontal boundary and area of low pressure sitting right on top of us. That's a look at your aviation forecast. We'll be back with your marine weather here in just a few minutes. Now there is another section to the remarks field and it's called additive and automated maintenance data. Pretty exciting stuff, I think. But let's take a look at the information we're going to find in this section. First of all, you might find temperature and dew point in tenths of degrees C, and that's the hourly temperature and dew point, hourly precipitation amounts, three and six hour precipitation amounts, six hour maximum temperature, six hour minimum temperature, 24 hour maximum minimum temperatures, and the sensor status indicators. Now let's take a look at how we might look at this when we look at a actual METAR here. And here we have the temperature field, it says T, and the temperature field begins with the T for temperature and has a single character here. And that character can either be a zero or one. And if it's a zero, it means the temperature is a plus temperature. If it's a one, it means the temperature is a minus temperature. And it also tells you the temperature and the purpose of this field is to tell you the temperature more precisely. Because with Celsius, we lose a little bit of resolution. And it's important when you're a pilot to know sometimes, particularly when the temperature is around freezing, uh, to the tenth of a degree. Uh, Fahrenheit has a little bit more resolution. We didn't need that. But with Celsius, we really need that. So what we're going to do is put a decimal point right here, and we can find out the temperature is 17.6 degrees. It rounded out to 18 degrees. Now, the dew point is the second four digits here. First of all, this is the field that tells you whether it's plus or minus, and because it's a zero, it's plus, and here it's 16.2 degrees, and that rounds off to 16 degrees. So it gives us a little bit more resolution, a little bit more information, and it's going to be important to us if we're around the freezing point. Let's do another one just to get an example of what one looks like with a, a minus. Here we have temperature, and that one tells you it's a minus temperature, and it works out to 6.4 degrees. Here we have the dew point, the one tells you it's also minus, and it works out to 7.4 degrees. So you see it gives you a little bit more resolution and a little bit more help than you would have had otherwise. Now let's take a look at some other uh, indicators you might find in this uh, section of the remarks. And for instance, it might tell you that RVR is not available, or the precipitation identifier is not available, or thunderstorm information is not available. These are the kinds of things you might find. And here's one more important indicator you might find, and it's what's known as a maintenance flag. It tells the people who are working on this thing whether maintenance might need to be needed on the system. Looks like a lot of money is going to be involved, but it's not necessarily the case. That's just a handy thing. It does remind you of maintenance, doesn't it? But what it might tell you is that they just need to reset something, and they can do it remotely. It doesn't even need to necessarily mean a trip out to the station. So now let's take a look at a METAR. We've been through the whole thing. It's time for you and I to see if we can't make some sense out of this. So let's take a look at the entire METAR and read it in its entirety. This is kind of our graduation for this thing. The METAR is for KDCA. Well, we recognize that as Washington National, and it's on the 11th day of the month at 1955 Zulu. And the first thing we're going to find out is the wind, remember? And the wind is from 230 degrees at 13 knots. The visibility is one and one half statute miles. And the runway 17 left RVR is 2,600 feet. There is a thunderstorm with moderate rain. There is mist. And there's an overcast at 1,000 feet, and the type of clouds is cumulonimbus. The temperature in degrees C or Celsius is 18. The dew point is 16. The altimeter setting, and this tells you it's in inches of mercury, is 29.92. And the remarks say that we have an AO2 that's giving us this report, and we have lightning and clouds, and the thunderstorm began 25 minutes after the hour. The sea level pressure is 1013.2. And the temperature for more resolution, to get more information out of it, is plus 17.6 degrees C, and the dew point is plus 16.2 degrees C, and this equal sign tells you that that's the end of the report. C, nothing to it. Now that you and I have actually passed our graduation test, we can take a look at some real weather here. There's some dash RA right there, I'm sure. And if you look very, very carefully, look right behind the wheels of this aircraft, you'll see it here. There it is. You see it, folks. PY. There's some spray going on. PY right there. All right, let's take a look at some more of these. 
And let's do something that's really fun. Let's demonstrate how good we are by actually reading some more of these METAR reports. You and I are really good, so let's demonstrate that. And all we're going to do, first of all, is answer the W questions. What? Well, the what says this is a, an aviation routine weather report. It's a METAR. The where question is, where is this? Oh, it's Abilene, Texas. You can see that right there. The when question says, when was this observation taken? And this observation taken, was taken at the 23rd day of the month at 1252 Zulu. Now, notice there is no who. I'm not trying to tell you there is no rock group anymore. The who still exists. There's just no who field here. And, that's, uh, and that tells us, because we also have no AO1 in remarks or AO2 in remarks, no who tells us this is a manual observation. So this was a manual observation in this particular case. And the last W that we want to talk about is the wind. The wind is from 270 degrees at 8 knots. The visibility is 2 statute miles. SM tells us statute miles. Also tells us that's the visibility field. The weather is light snow, rain, and mist. How about that? Now let's take a look at the sky condition. The sky condition is scattered clouds at 300 feet, and we're going to have some broken clouds over here at 700 feet. And by the way, the lowest layer of broken or overcast clouds is the ceiling, so the ceiling is that broken at 700 feet, and we have an overcast layer at 1,500 feet. Here we have the temperature and dew point. The temperature is 1. The dew point is minus 1. That doesn't stand for missing. That stands for minus. So it's minus 1. Those are in degrees Celsius. The altimeter setting, and this A tells us it's in inches of mercury, is 30.04. And the remarks say visibility in the, um, in the sector visibility, north through east, is 1 mile. The tower visibility, by the way, is 3 miles. It tells us that right there. And the uh, SNB38 tells us the snow began 38 minutes after the hour. The pressure is falling rapidly, and this is the sea level pressure field. It says sea level pressure is, in this case, we're going to add a 10 to make it closer to 1,000, 1013.9. And here is the better resolution on the temperature. The temperature is 0.8 degrees C. That rounds off the 1. And the dew point is minus because there is a 1 in that field that tells us that's minus because there's 0 here. We know it's plus. Here it's minus. It's minus 1.4 degrees. And the equal sign tells us that's the end of this report. That's the end. Here's a look at southeast and a northeasterly flow coming across the inner channels around 30 knots or so, especially across the north will produce some gustier winds. Seas running around 6 feet, 5 foot seas as you head down towards some of the southern entrances. And the offshore wind continues. What does that mean? Dry weather continues for southeast tomorrow. 15 knot winds there up around Icy Cape and Cape Fairweather. Becoming northerly on Thursday around 10 knots with a 5 foot sea. Uh, 7 to 8 foot seas a little bit further south of Sitka out toward Craig. And more of a variable flow inside of the uh, inner channels there. Southeasterlies around Stevens Passage and Frederick Sound around 20 knots with a 4 foot sea. Northerlies coming down the Lynn Canal may still be gusty at times. And 4 foot seas there across uh, Clarence and Chatham Straits. Uh, 20 knots with a 4 foot sea on Thursday. Across south central then, an onshore flow coming into the Kenai Peninsula and Prince William Sound, 10 to 15 knots. Seas anywhere from 2 feet on the inside, 5 feet on the outside, 6 foot seas uh, coming up from the south toward Kodiak Island. Then a light variable flow west of the Barren Islands and inside Chillicoff Strait. And southwesterly, this is key to the snow now, 10 to 15 knots coming up the Cook Inlet. 2 to 3 foot seas are expected there in the sea ice free area. Now Thursday that reverses course. By this point low pressures move just a little bit farther north and east. So we've got the northerly flow coming down the Cook Inlet. 10, 15, even 20 knot winds there coming down the Cook Inlet with seas ranging from 3 to 6 feet. 3 foot seas in Chillicoff Strait with an easterly flow. A southeasterly flow now over Kodiak Island in light and variable winds elsewhere across the western and northern Gulf, even inside Prince William Sound around 10 knots with two foot seas there, five to six foot seas continue in the north and the west. Across the Alaska Peninsula, a northeasterly flow coming out of Bristol Bay, 20 to 25 knots, five to six foot seas on the Bering Sea side, six to seven foot seas on the Pacific side with an onshore flow coming into Chignik and uh, parts of the Alaska Peninsula at 20 knots uh, south of King Cove. And that will stay the same as we head into Thursday. The winds come up there around Castle Cape and east of Chignik, 35 knots from the east with a 10 foot sea and northeasterlies out of Bristol Bay. Those continue at 20 to 25 knots with five to seven foot seas in the bearing. 
Across the Aleutians, an east and northeasterly flow for Wednesday there, 30 to 35 knots from the eastern to central parts of the chain, 25 to 35 knots on the Pacific side with 9 to 15 foot seas there, 16 foot seas around Kiska and northeasterlies around Atu with a 17 foot sea. By Thursday, we expect more of a broad northeasterly flow for all areas in the Aleutians, 25 to 30 knots or so uh, with 10 to 12 foot seas on the Pacific side and 9 to 12 foot seas on most of the Bering side. For the western chain, the seas could be as high as 13 feet. Across the west now, a north and easterly flow coming off the continent and out of the Bering Strait will keep it cold and dry. A few areas around uh, St. Lawrence Island might see a few light snow showers, Nunavak Island and some parts of the Pribilovs. By and large, a widespread snow is not expected. 25 to 30 knots uh, for most areas there from the north and northeast. Looking at 9 foot seas in the St. Matthew Island waters as well as the Pribilovs and northeasterlies out of Kuskokwim Bay at 7 foot seas uh, in the ice free areas. Freezing. Uh, uh, Spray is likely there on Wednesday. Some of that could be heavy, and there are warnings out for that. We'll see what happens on Thursday, but likely the situation will not change very much. So 25 to 30 knot winds there from the north and northeast. Eight-foot seas expected around the Pribilovs, and a little bit less than that out of uh, Kuskokwim Bay. Eight-foot seas around the St. Matthew Island waters. Otherwise, the winds stay about the same. Looking at the north slope, uh, you're looking at a northerly onshore flow to Barrow, Point Lake, Cape Lisburn, and uh, Kotzebue Sound. Also looking at northerlies at 25 to 30 knots. A westerly flow across the Beaufort Sea Coast at 10 to 15 knots. That strengthens a little bit as we get into Thursday, and every little bit more of that wind makes that wind chill value drop even more. And once again, wind chill advisories are posted for a large part of the Brooks Range and uh, parts of the uh, Kotzebue Sound area. Uh, looking at winter weather advisories, wind chill values anywhere the air is moving in this kind of weather, uh, probably talking about uh, levels that could reach 40 to 45 below. So again, be extra careful out there. Northwesterly flow north of Barrow, northeasterlies as you head into the Chukchi, 10 to 25, even 30 knots there again coming into Kotzebue Sound. Recapping tonight's weather, a slow moving area of low pressures working over south central at this point. As it moves up the Cook Inlet, it's going to stir up some accumulating snow overnight and tomorrow for areas around Anchorage, the Matsu, Kenai Peninsula, and up the Susitna Valley toward Talkeetna. Southeast looks to be dry but freezy. The dry weather will continue for you for at least another couple days. And windy weather at times across the western parts of Alaska, especially the north and west, means wind chill advisories will be upon you. It looks like more of the same for the Aleutians with periods of rain and snow, depending on which out of the frontal boundary you're on and drying windy weather for the west. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. Thanks for watching. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. If you are interested in serving on your local federal subsistence regional advisory council, the deadline to apply is Friday, March 21st. The councils provide information and recommendations to the federal subsistence board on subsistence hunting, trapping, and fishing. For more information on the advisory councils and how to apply, call 1-800-478 1456 or email subsistence at fws.gov. This message sponsored by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service.